Hey guys, welcome to Charcoal King. The Black Lock Griddle Review. So this review is gonna be a little bit different than most reviews you see. Uh, basically, I'm gonna do less talking and more cooking. I wanna put this thing to the test as fast as we can, see the good, see the bads, and let you guys determine whether or not you should add it to your cast iron edition. All right, so we got it in the mail and I've opened the box. I've already taken the, uh, the little description off of it. Um, I can already tell you I'm pretty impressed. Um, this is my original griddle. And one of the biggest reasons why I started looking for different griddles was when I put this, you guys, you see this? When I put this on my stove, for me to use the flat part of it, then I have to put this part down. Well, once you uh, season this with oil, like you're supposed to every time, and you turn it upside down on your flat top, I don't have a gas range, I have electric range. Then all that oil heats up and then it burns underneath. So we started looking around and I bought the 12 inch black lock skillet and I was really, really, really impressed. And uh, the more I get into cast iron and the more the options are out there, I thought, man, I'm gonna give this griddle a try. Now, probably the biggest reason why I purchased this one versus a different one was the size. I really wanted a larger griddle to go to my Weber and I kept looking around for size, 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 size matters. But uh, but this was the biggest one I can find. But after measuring it, I'm actually pretty surprised of how the measurements seem when they're online. So let's just, let's just do a quick look. This is my go-to griddle for everything, okay? So at the widest point, this is 10 inches wide. At the narrowest point, it's nine, nine, uh, let's say eight and a, eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters. And then the inside is basically 14 inches. So rough figure, 10 by 14, okay? Well, this is supposed to be eight, uh, 10 by 20 inches. Let's see what happens. 10 inches from side to side. And this is where it gets you. This is where it's pretty disappointing. 17 and a half inches from side to side. The difference of the 20 inches, you've got to go to the exterior of the handle to the exterior of the handle. Now, for me personally, I think it could be a little bit misleading, a little bit disappointing. You know, if they came out and made the edges square, you could pick up a little bit more cooking space on the on the corners. But other than that, the biggest reason why we got this versus just another griddle is the, the advantage of putting this on the stove and having you guys see what we can do with it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that's come tripled season. I'm not going to tell you that they made it lightweight. And I'm not going to tell you that it came with a drip pan. You can find all that stuff online. What I am going to do is start the biggest breakfast that our family can cook. Everything from pancakes, bacon, and probably about four different orders of eggs uh, to see what we can do on the very first cook. All right, guys, so all we've done now, we washed it with soapy water. We let it dry. And for most people viewing at home, these are options. You've got two big eyes here and you've got three big eyes there. So your options are really depending on how comfortable you feel with your stove. Now the two options are, you can use a double burner like this and use these two, or you can do it to where you can do a, a bigger spot and then a little spot or you can put it right in the middle. Sometimes, really depending on what I'm using, I like to do it uh, this way because it gives me a chance to move this off the heat just a little bit so I have a cooler spot. There's nothing wrong with having a cooler spot instead of having the whole thing roaring at one time. So really quick before we get this uh, heated up, I did want to show you guys this. Now, I'm pretty curious about this. Granted, I have not cooked with this before. This is why we're doing the reviews. You guys can see there's a little bit of water left over. That's going to end up drying out when we heat it up. But you notice how there's rivets. I'm pretty sure that's how they made it lightweight. You guys see that? I'm really, really curious to see how much heat from the actual uh, glass top can penetrate this griddle when I don't have an open flame. You know, usually on a standard griddle, it'd be completely flat on the backside, so you'd have even heat. But with this, you're getting very minimal um, surface to actually touch the, uh, the burner. So let's give this a try. As you guys can see, I've got it on medium low, got it between three and four. Uh, my hot temperature on this stove is from eight to nine. Now some stoves might be different, but you can imagine 
I'm only about three and a half to four, so whatever your dials are. And I'm gonna use a two burner. You guys see that? My two burners are on. So I've got the big one here, which covers about that, that much space. And I've got the little one here that covers about that much space. All right, so our first three pancakes were a disaster. I'm gonna show you why. It's either one of two things, probably a combination of both. The griddle right here obviously has a cold spot. And that's where one of my pancakes just naturally landed. And what I was afraid of is I think coming true. The fact that the griddle does not have a solid surface means it's gonna take a little bit more heat for the griddle itself to heat up. So what we've done, we've risen our temperature on our, uh, on our stove and now I'm at about four and a half. Let's back that down a little bit. About four and a half versus three and a half. We're gonna give that a shot. We're gonna put, uh, we're gonna try it this way this time, see if it matters. No, we're gonna go back to the normal way. This is normally how I do it with my other griddles. The pan itself is phenomenal. When uh, when you get the hot spots, it's really, it comes up clean. As you guys can see, all I've done is just wiped it down. There's no um, uh, residue or sticking or anything like that. So I'm not worried about pre-seasoning or seasoning more or anything like that. What we are gonna do is start the second batch of pancakes. All right, like I said, a little oil. Now we're smoking, which means we're probably too hot now. Great. But we're gonna go with it. That's the noise you wanna hear. You guys hear the difference in the noise? How that's got some sizzle to it? Now those two are directly on the, the middle burners. We're gonna put the third one a little bit closer to the big circle. Why you say is that important? Well, imagine if you're doing uh, peppers and onions and steak, or if you're doing anything that could go on the griddle, bacon, you always wanna know your hot spots on your griddle. So a great way to do it is pancakes, because you'll see the browning can be different throughout the griddle, and you're gonna learn your good spots and bad spots. We're gonna give these a couple minutes, we're gonna flip them and see if round two was better than round one. All right, so we're about ready to flip. We're gonna take these guys to the next level, add a little bit more chocolate chips. Even with the chocolate chips on the first batch, it's never even stuck, so we're just giving it a try. I think I might be a little bit too hot. Ooh. Way better, way better. Now granted, my griddle right now could be just a tad hot, and I might not have let it have enough time to preheat the first time, but I'm telling you, we didn't season it, we didn't do everything that uh, you're supposed to on these griddles. We just took it right out of the box, washed it, rinsed it, add a little bit of spray of olive oil, and you can see this bad boy is about as non-stick as it gets. I don't think there's gonna be a single problem with eggs, bacon, or anything on this griddle. Look how even the color is. Maybe there because it was from here, but overall the color's pretty even. See the difference in the spots of the eye? That's a little bit darker, but that's a learning curve for this new griddle. There we go. There we go. Look at the difference. See how there's one light, one light, one dark, one dark? All that is is difference of putting your griddle where it needs to be on the stove. Like I said, it's a brand new griddle, but we're gonna get these bad boys pegged down and show you guys what the inside of these pancakes look like. All right, guys, so you can see how fluffy and airy this pancake is. Now, obviously, it's a good pancake mix, but the griddle itself, you can see the even coloring on both sides. Um, I don't think I'm going to have a single bit of problem out of this griddle. Uh, the only downsides I can see is the fact that just on a regular uh, glass top, you can have some um, heating problems. And you might have to heat it up just a little bit harder than normal. But the next thing we're going to do mm, is keep it, the afterburners on. Next is going to be bacon and we're gonna do some eggs on it, show you guys what it looks like, stay tuned.
Well, this is our first attempt at doing the egg. And as you can see, uh, I was really, really surprised to see this egg stick the way it did, considering we just ran a ton of pancakes on it. And we also just ran a whole pound of bacon. Um, so we're going to try for round two. Well, this is our second egg, and uh, imagine my surprise I found out that this one stuck just like the first one. Um, I haven't really put butter or um, olive oil down. I did use the aerosol olive oil, but only just to test it out. I didn't really want to um, overload it with butter or olive oil to, uh, to see if that would help the egg stick. I want to see what the pan could do. All right, guys, we're going to put this egg on here. The griddle's probably a little bit hot. But I'd much rather have hot than I would cool. Let's see what happens. Everybody wants to do a fried egg test on a new oh golly, on a new cast iron thing. I want to put the griddle through the through the ringer. I think tomorrow we're going to do steak sandwiches, maybe a panini or something, or a, a press sandwich. Mm. Ew. I'd call that non-stick. What do you think? Well, this is kind of like a bonus feature. It's kind of like an update. Um, it's been about four or five days since we've done the initial review, the initial cook with the pancakes, bacon, and eggs. And uh, after talking it over with my wife, I think we're going to return it. As much as it pulls on my heartstrings, I don't want to let it go. I really don't. I, I was really excited to get it. I'm still excited to have it. But functionality-wise, it really just didn't meet what I wanted. Um, like I said, I have a glass stove. And uh, the way the heat comes up through it, I really was hoping for a flat bottom. Um, something that I didn't have to flip over and worry about uh, the grease or the oils burning from the bottom. Um, so that was one of the benefits about getting this was having uh, the solid surface on the bottom instead of having a two-sided um, griddle. The other kind of downside, you know, everybody has their own budget, but to just to buy a $100 griddle and set it on my Weber uh, Summit Charcoal Grill, I was like, man, there's got to be stuff out there. Um, so I bought this pan. If you guys want to follow this link up here, it's called the Lodge Paella 15-inch Carbon Steel Pan. I bought these two at the same time. And so what happens is every time I would use this in the next couple of days, I kept referring to that pan as like, man, that pan could be better. That pan was cheaper. That pan's done everything that this can do and more. So with that being said, after review's done, after this is all said and done, unfortunately, it's just gonna to have to go back to the store. But I will say this about the, about the black lock uh, griddle. It wasn't its fault. The griddle itself was great. It's just the functionality of how we use it in our home. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, comment below. What kind of griddles are you guys using on your grill? Maybe there's one out there that I haven't even seen, that I haven't even thought of, haven't even uh, read about on the internet. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Peace.